السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in two weeks today is Tuesday in two weeks Tuesday on the 17th we will be hosting, the masjid will be hosting some guests, inshallah. We will have an interfaith program here. Uh, there will be a rabbi who will be flying in from Israel. There will be a Catholic priest uh, who will be coming to the masjid also. The two of them, uh, along with myself, we will be engaged in a discussion and a dialogue on extremism. Um, I will discuss the notion of extremism and its roots um, as well as the rabbi and as well as the, uh, the priest. The discussion will be held inshallah ta'ala in the gym. And we invite brothers and sisters to come. We do expect a very large presence. There are several of our interfaith brothers and sisters from the Jewish community and from the Christian community that will be coming to the Masjid just for this event. Um, the event will begin at 7 p.m. Uh, we will break for Salat al-Maghrib, inshallah ta'ala. We will invite our guests to observe the Salat. We will invite them to observe the Salat so they will sit in the back, inshallah. After the Salah, we will go back to the gym and continue. Um, this dialogue and this discussion obviously is rooted in contemporary issues, but it is also a point of da'wah for us. And so we invite all of you, you may bring your families as well, inshallah ta'ala, you will see more information in the rotunda and from the masjid about this event, inshallah. Again, it will be two weeks, Tuesday, March the 17th from 7 p.m., to 9 p.m. inshallah ta'ala. The second is um, inshallah ta'ala beginning tomorrow uh, I will travel for one week to Istanbul, Turkey inshallah ta'ala. It is for the purpose of uh, connecting and building more relations with scholars that are there. Many of you know Sheikh Yusuf Kavakche, uh, the former Imam of Richardson Masjid. We'll be meeting with him, inshallah, and other uh, scholars and business leaders to make connections between taqwa and our masjid and the level of scholarship and teaching in Istanbul to arrange for uh, um, uh, joint relationship for sharing of scholars and teachers. And we want to develop um, a program where in the summer we take uh, students, Muslim students here and adults as well, to Istanbul to study and learn about the Islamic civilization and etc. So this is in relation to um, developing taqwa, developing further opportunities, inshallah ta'ala, between our community uh, and our teachers and, and, and brothers and sisters there in Istanbul, Turkey. I will be gone one week. Inshallah ta'ala, I will return next week. Inshallah ta'ala on Jum'ah. So I'll be, with, I'll be leaving tomorrow. Inshallah, as I will keep you all in my du'as. Inshallah ta'ala. Uh, should you need me, I will be available via email, inshallah ta'ala. But other than that, I'll be back next Jum'ah, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I will leave you as is traditional with one hadith, inshallah. Very short hadith. Qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Ittaqillahu haythu ma kunt. Wherever you are, your bathroom, your bedroom, your living room, your job, the masjid, with your kids, in the hospital, restaurant, library, public or private, wherever you are, be mindful of Allah Ta'ala. Haythu ma kunt, wherever you are, irregardless of space. There should never be the idea of a space that deters you from the remembrance of Allah. 
that should not exist. If that space, for some reason, pulls you into a realm of forgetting Allah, then that space either is not the right space for you, or you must, and we must, rearrange and reorient our relationship with that space, in one way or another. So wherever you are, wherever you might be spatially, geographically, you must be mindful of Allah. وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةِ حَسَنَةِ الْتَمْحُهَا And when you make a mistake, inevitably, because you're, you and I are human beings, we will fall into error, we will make mistakes. Get up. Don't stay down. Whenever you make a sayya, a bad deed, follow it up with a good deed. In other words, just like one foot goes in front of the next, that's the way it should be. If we make a mistake, we do hasanat. We make a mistake, we give sadaqah. We make a mistake, we do a good deed. Any type of error we do, we should connect that error with the conscious perception and the conscious action of trying to do something good. Always. Such that when we see a mistake in ourselves, we must also find an opening to do hasana. So follow it up. Tamhuha, and it will wipe it out. Follow it up, and it will wipe it out. This begs the question of what if we don't follow it up? Bimana, what if we make a mistake and we wait a week before we do a good deed? Or we wait a day before we do a good deed? Or we have an opportunity to do a good deed and we don't do a good deed? We, 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 sh- we shy away from it. We wait a while. We don't know what will happen. The ulama have not, it's not clear what will happen in that case. And the Prophet ﷺ used to encourage his community, us, to haste in doing good deeds. And so, this translates into a general operation of whenever we are faced with actions of khair, whenever we are faced with the option to do any good deed, even if we've not knowingly, consciously made a bad deed, Whenever we are faced with the choice to do good, we should run to it quickly. We should do it immediately. Why? Because the thought, the idea, the conscious uh, feeling of wait, of let me do it later, of postponement, it's called tasweef, always delaying and delaying, that is from shaitan. And so the other meaning of that hadith is when you make a bad deed, follow it up with a good deed, i.e. don't give in to the waswas of shaitan that's telling you to delay. In other words, when you make a mistake, the second potential error to come from that, potential, the second error is that you have an opportunity to do, to do good and you don't do it. Right? You make a mistake, then there's a way out of the mistake. Or there's an opportunity to do good, Allah Ta'ala will open that opportunity up. And you get an idea, a thought, what's called a khawatir or or a khatir, an idea to do something later. Or to not do it at all. To walk by that person who's hungry. To walk by the sadaqah box. To not greet that brother or that, or your fellow sister, who perhaps you should be greeting. To not forgive that fellow brother or your fellow sister. That thought will come to the, your mind. That was that's from shaitan, and so you hasten, and I should hasten towards doing acts of good that rejects that was was it from shaitan, and it also wipes out the bad deed. Why? Because our running to good deeds is a dalil or a dalala or an indicator of our internal desire to run towards Allah Taala. And if we'd stay in that muck, in that filth, in that mud of bad deeds, or even if we come out but we delay and we uh, uh, postpone doing good deeds, then that is also a dalala, a proof that we have not decided to run to Allah Ta'ala. And that's what tawbah is. It's turning your back and returning to Allah Ta'ala. And so hastening to that good deed 
is that external effort. It's a proof, it's a gesture, it's a symbol of returning. And returning quickly to Allah Ta'ala. Just like a child, when they're lost and they find their mother, they run quickly, crying to their mother. Happy to return to the grace, to the rahmah, to the bounty, to the love of their mother right? or their father. And so when Allah Ta'ala, when we mess up, when we make an error, Allah Ta'ala will open the door, say, here I am, ya ibadi, here I am. If you want to return, where are you? Follow it up. Follow it up quickly, immediately, run to that good deed and see it as a way to return to Allah. وَخَالِكِ nas And behave when you're in the company of people. You see, notice the first the Prophet ﷺ talked about the company of Allah. Be mindful of Allah wherever you are. You're always in the company of Allah. You're never alone. And when you're in error, you have to return to the company of Allah. Right? Through good deeds. But then when you're in physical company of human beings, you must always be mindful of them. Mindful of their needs. Mindful of their circumstances. Mindful of their idiosyncrasies, their weird attributes, their weird conduct. Mindful of their human humanity. Mindful of their ability to make a mistake just like you and I are able to make a mistake. Be mindful of that. وَخَالَكِ nas bi خُلُكِ hasan. And behave well to people. Understand you're an abd, they're an abd. And both of you in your conduct, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, Christian or Jew, atheist or agnostic, whatever, that they who they are should not change who we are in terms of akhlaq. In terms of akhlaq. Maybe in terms of ta'amal, but not in our akhlaq. And what we do, how we do it, is for Allah Ta'ala. And we see his jamal, we see his beauty, we see his irada, we see his qudra, we see everything about the will of Allah, the sifat of Allah, the actions of Allah, when we are witnessing people also, because they are khalq Allah. And so we behave well with those people, because that abd is also a dependent of Allah Ta'ala. They are a, they are a recipient of the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala. And in some cases, depending on who you talk to, they might be a beloved of Allah Ta'ala. They might be someone Allah Ta'ala loves. And so, as a general rule, you err on the side of akhlaq. Good akhlaq. وَخَالَكِ النَّاسِ بِخُولَكِ الْحَسَنِ InshaAllah Ta'ala. So let us be mindful. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala endow us with the attribute of taqwa, inshaAllah Ta'ala, in our qulub, and let that resonate in our minds, let us hasten towards actions of af'al khayriya, and let us also behave, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endow us with khuluq al-hasan, with all human beings, all animals, all plants, and even all objects. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiyal alim. Wa tuba alayna ya maulana inna ka anta tawabur rahim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.